What's up guys? Chris Hansen here with Team Aquascape and I am back. A couple weeks ago you guys saw the importance of fall nettings, how we do them, and what they actually end up looking like. Today what we're going to do is we are going to take a pond that already has the fall netting done and we're going to go ahead and shut this pond down for the winter. So we're going to go through the steps to shut this pond down, also the reasoning why, and some of the little tips and tricks on how we do it. So if you guys want to follow along, let's go ahead and roll in. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. All right, so now that we talked about what we're doing, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of clean this area up, get rid of all the excess leaf debris. We're actually going to pull this net up and put up a cabling system to help support the net and tent it a little bit better and get a lot of the debris that's already collected on the net before we go ahead and put the de-icer, the bubbler, and all that stuff in as part of the fall shutdown after we remove the pump. So we're gonna go ahead and get the blower going, start cleaning this area up, and before we put that net back up, we'll kind of explain the next steps in the process before we shut this thing down for good. I think it's important to note right now in the video, while netting all of the debris out of the pond, it's important to kind of keep an eye on where some of those shallow ledges are because as you're netting and scooping all of this leaf debris out of the body of water, you're gonna stir the water up, cloud it up, and make it very hard to see. The reason you wanna kind of target those shallower areas, that's where you want to put those Pro Air 60 diffusers. Ever wanna drop them in the very bottom of the pond because you're gonna be taking that warm water and bringing it up to the surface, essentially hypercooling the water throughout the course of the winter. So you really only wanna put those in the shallow, you know, anywhere from 10 to 16 inches of water and leave the bottom deep section alone, okay? So while I'm in here, I'm kind of going through looking as I'm clouding up the water, I'm like, that's a great section, that's a great section. I definitely wanna keep them away from the middle of the pond, which the aerators are currently sitting. So I'm actually gonna move those up to a different location in the pond once I'm done netting all this debris out. All right, so now that we're done kind of netting out all of the debris, you really want to limit the amount of bio load that's inside the body of water throughout the winter because it will continue to break down and add to the nitrogenous waste. But rather than me get into it, why don't we turn it over to the guy that really knows what the heck he's talking about and why we've incorporated these products into the fall shutdown. Here you go. Hey, Dave Kelly here, VP of Product Management and Development at Aquascape. A key component to helping your fish survive throughout the winter, if you live in one of those cold, sub-freezing temperature regions, is you gotta provide a hole in the ice for good gas exchange. You run your waterfall pump throughout the winter time, you don't shut your pond down. That circulation over your normal waterfalls, rocks and gravel, it's gonna provide that gas exchange for you. But if you're like a lot of people, during the winter time you shut everything down, then you have to provide that gas exchange. And there's a couple different products you can use to do that. One of the more popular ones is a de-icer. Now, this is a 300 watt energy efficient de-icer. And what I mean by that is, it's energy efficient because a lot of the de-icers out there can cost two, three, four times that to run. I mean, we're talking like 1500 watts. So if you're not careful and you're buying a de-icer offline, you're not looking at the data and the specs on it, you're going to find out when you get your first electrical bill because it's going to be through the roof. So it's an energy efficient de-icer also because it has an internal thermostat. So that thermostat is going to toggle that heating element on and off. It senses the water right around the, the de-icer and if it needs to actually turn on, it will. And if it doesn't need to turn on, it'll keep the thing shut off to conserve energy. You know it's working because it's got a little LED light on the top of it, a little beacon. So you can look out your window, you can see that the light's on and you, you have that comfort and safety that you're de is actually functioning. Stainless steel, not gonna corrode rust, three-year warranty, it's a nice quality de-icer. Now, beyond the de-icer, there's other products you can use. So 
just come over here real quick, I'll show you our different options as far as aeration goes. Aeration is going to do a similar thing. The nice thing about aeration is you can use this year round. So spring, summer, fall, you have your aeration in there to take those hot temperatures, hot sunny days, circulate that water, provide good oxygen in the water. But in the winter months, you take those diffusers, the little discs or the cylinders, and you put them up higher towards the surface of the water where that air coming out of it can really agitate and boil the surface of the water and prevent that ice from freezing over. It work, works really, really well. There's other things you can use as well. Here we have pumps. So we have specific pumps that are designed to go in the pond. So these aren't the pumps put in your skimmer filter, your pump vault. These are pumps that have a large protective cage over them. So the Aquaforce pump here has a similar pump inside your skimmer or your falls, but it's protected by a cage. This is important because when you put this pump in, there's leaves and debris that are going to be in that pond and the pump's going to want to suck it in. This cage prevents that from getting clogged up. It also protects the fish because you also don't want the fish, frogs and stuff getting sucked up into a pump. So you, you, you want to use these in the pond. It's a, it's a in-use pond pump. We have up this, we have a power head pump, but these do the same thing. Just like I was talking about putting the air diffusers up on the upper shelves and get it right below the surface of the water to agitate it. You put this pump right here on the second shelf, right below the water, have that discharge shooting there and that'll boil the water and that'll also keep a hole open in the ice. I always recommend using two devices. You never want to just rely on one. And the reason you want to do that is for redundancy. One of them fails, you got to back up out there until you troubleshoot and fix the one that actually fails. So you don't want to have just one because then you're, it's all or nothing. What I like to do is I use a smart plug. So they have an Aquascape smart plug that connects to our app. So plug both those devices in it and then I go into the app and I set up under the automation section to notify me if one of these goes off. So this is nice. You can be sitting in the warmth of your living room watching TV and all of a sudden if you get a notification, you know something's wrong out there, which is critical because you're trying to keep that gas exchange going and that circulation open for the fish to help them, help them survive. Another nice thing you can use that app for is a digital thermometer. We have that sitting over here, right here. Now this also connects to the app. Now what's nice about the digital thermometer is it'll tell you what the temperature of the water is, but it'll also send you notifications. For instance, when you're maintaining your water feature, we have our water treatments, which are beneficial bacteria. They're warm water beneficial bacteria. Spring, summer, fall is what those cultures are designed for. But as soon as that temperature starts to get cold and drop, they pretty much go dormant. We have a cold water bacteria that then you can use. And you can use that throughout the winter month. That is a strain that's basically from Arctic water. So it's designed to actually be active and, and doing its job during the winter months. So what's nice about that thermometer is it'll notify you it's time to start using cold water bacteria. You can go out and start using it. And then when things finally start to warm up, it'll tell you to convert back over to using the regular bacteria again. So we got a whole bunch of stuff to help you get through that cold winter months season. If you want more information about these products, you can check the link in the description below. It'll take you to the website. We have a whole seasonal section on the website. You can dive into everything from the thermometer to the de-icers, to the, the pumps, to the cold water bacteria. All right, so right now I was just checking the elevation of that diffuser that the homeowner had already put in. And that's at about 12 inches, which is perfectly acceptable for the location of one of these aerator diffusers in the body of water. You don't want to have them really any further below that 14 inch mark going all the way down to the deep part of the pond. Because what happens is in the winter time, all the coldest water is up towards the top and the warmer water is down towards the bottom. What can happen is by putting that aerator down on the very bottom, as those air bubbles carry up from the warm water up to the cold water, it's actually carrying the warm water with it, mixing that water, essentially hypercooling it. So you can actually drive that colder water down further and deeper into the pond, which you don't want to do. You want to keep that warm water down at the bottom. That's where the fish are going to hibernate or go into their state corpor, which is essentially like a, a sleep through the off season. Their digestive system starts to shut down and they basically become still. We want to keep that water nice and warm. We are oxygenating the pond by incorporating the aerator diffusers as well as the de-icer to keep a hole open in the ice to allow for gas exchange. So you don't have to worry about the dissolved oxygen content, not nearly as much as the water temps of the water getting too low and making it bad for the fish. All right, so we established that that aerator right there, that diffuser is in good shape. However, when I go over to this one, I'm gonna go right over top of the bubbles and that one is probably about two feet in depth. So I'm actually gonna move this and just put that up on the shallow shelf that's right in front of the skimmer box just to help keep that into some of that cooler water and allow those bubbles to keep a hole open in the ice up in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that one. I'm gonna leave that one where it's at and then we'll get the de-icer in.
All right, so we've got our aerators moved around. Well, actually just the one moved around up to that shallow shelf. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install this de-icer. One thing I would like to recommend or a little tip that I'd like to point out when talking about the de-icer is this will have a tendency to just kind of float and bob in the pond. Now, if you're one of those people that keeps your pond running throughout the winter and you have that constant water flow getting drawn across the pond, this will actually sit in the current and get pulled back by the skimmer. So one thing that's neat about it is they have this little hole right here and this allows you to tie a piece of string or in my case I'm just gonna use some of my leftover paracord from fall netting. After I tie the paracord to this I'm gonna tie the other end of that string to some kind of weight or anchor and what that'll do is that will allow this to stay stationary in the pond and, and not be moving and getting drawn back towards the skimmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that attached and then when I put it in the pond I'm gonna talk real quick about the placement of these in the pond. So just hang with me and uh, let's get this thing going. So, went ahead and plugged the de-icer in. You can see that it is working. The red light is on. I do have power to the device. Now what I want to do is I just want to place this thing in the pond. The reason I went ahead and plugged it in now is I wanted to see how far away from that outlet I could get. And I'm also looking at the two air stones that I have. Now, those air stones or those diffusers are going to disrupt the surface water, agitate it, which is great, but it's also causing ripples in the water. I want to target this thing at one of the more still points in the pond, which appears to be kind of right in the middle, right over that deep spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just put that in the pond. You'll see where it's floating. And what I want to do is I want to just take the other end of my tether and just create some kind of anchor for it, right? And if I go out a little bit further into the pond, that's okay, right? Now you can see it getting kind of pushed around and moving. I'm not actually hugging on it. It kind of settled right there in the middle. What I don't want to do is have too long of a tether to where in the event that this thing can get pulled back across the pond or get pulled towards one of the air stones. I want that thing as stationary as I can to keep it from kind of bobbing up and down and really monkeying with the thermostat inside, turning it on and off, which can lead your homeowners or your customers out there to get very confused if in fact it is working. So I just have, again, that paracord, which is my tether. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna wrap it kind of crudely around a rock and I will just anchor it right off the edge over here. And I'll just put that rock right on the edge, preventing it from moving back and forth in the pond as the season progresses. So let's just go ahead and recap what we've done so far. We got here, the net was kind of a mess. There was a lot of leaf debris around the pond. We went ahead and got all that cleaned up, netted as much of the debris out of the pond as we could. We talked about the reason why. We placed our air stones or those diffusers that come with the Pro Air 60 to put them in a more conducive spots that remember that shallow water that we want to put those in. We put the de-icer in, that kind of centralized area, slow moving water. We've got all that done. Now we're done essentially inside the pond. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and shut the pond down itself. We're gonna go ahead and remove the pumps that are in the skimmer box and get those put away for the winter. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna disconnect power to our pumps. You can actually see some of the stuff start to backflow out of the skimmer box. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the skimmer lid off. Go ahead and just gonna close this for a second because I wanna pull the skimmer basket out. Now I'm gonna get in here. There are two pumps on this pond as well as my automatic dosing system. There's that feeder tube and go ahead and pull that out. And then I'm just simply gonna disconnect the check valves and this will drain the biofalls and the plumbing lines as well. So the reason we're doing this is we want to go ahead and get these pumps out of here, but also get rid of any excess water in the plumbing lines and disallow it from freezing. So there's my skimmer net, it's a little goopy. We'll go ahead and you can see it start to overflow right. Get some of that back into the pond. Now that I've got the skimmer basket out, okay, everything is equalized. I'm gonna go ahead and get this Aquasurge jet pump out. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of them out at the same time. Sometimes it just happens like that. You see all the debris that's collected around the pump cage on the waterfall pump. We're gonna go ahead and get all that stuff cleaned up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off to the side, take them out into the middle of the yard and go ahead and get these pumps nice and clean before we put them inside for the winter time. That way in the spring, when we go to hook everything back up, everything's nice and clean and uh, pretty and ready to go.
right, so we've got all of that taken care of. Now that we've got the components out, which are the pumps, the ion gen, the dosing system, all of that stuff that we want to pull for the winter time. Remember, the reason we pulled the pumps, because we are not going to leave this feature running throughout the winter, is we wanted to disconnect the check valves. And what that's doing is that it will now allow that water that's in the plumbing to now backflow into the skimmer box. And that water will get out of that plumbing line, disallowing it to freeze in the winter and potentially crack that pipe. So the biofalls is completely drained. All the water has now backflowed into the skimmer box and which in turn is now in the pond you can actually see the pond was overfilled and this will happen a lot on projects when ponds are super full after a strong rain but all that excess water sometimes will overflow the pond so that's not a big deal but we've got that stuff cleaned up we've got to put up next to the back door making it very easy for the customer to put away for the winter time get it into a freeze free place like a basement or a heated garage just to basically ensure that that stuff is good to go in the springtime when we go to hook everything back up same thing with the ion gen and the dosing system we pulled that because they're no longer effective when water temps get to this point so we're going to stop using them we might as well just have all that stuff put together in one spot so when we come back in the springtime to start this thing up everything is in one centralized location now that i have all of this done the pond is shut down we are going to go ahead and put that net back up per the request of the homeowner and on some of these earlier in the season shutdowns we want to do that anyways because there are still leaves left on some of these deciduous trees so we want to prevent any of that leaf drop from falling back into the pond after we took so much time to clean it out so we'll get the net back up and then we're out of here. So a few weeks back, you guys saw fall netting and you saw a little bit of it today here, just getting this pond ready for winter. You might be asking yourself why shut the pond down when we did. A couple things that we wanna go by or operate off of is when that water starts to dip below 50, 45 degrees and it's staying there consistently, that's really the ideal time to shut these features down. You don't wanna do it when the water is freezing cold or approaching freezing temperatures, but doing it when it's about 45 degrees is really a good time because you really don't know when the bottom's gonna drop out here in the Midwest. We really don't know when the next polar vortex is going to happen after we start getting a couple of overnight freezes. So it's a great time to do it because the longer you go, the higher risk you run of running into issues of not getting it shut down in time or having to break ice open in order to do the fall shutdown. So we just want to be proactive with our customers' ponds. These are their pets. They have their pets in them, but these are a living, breathing thing and we want to take as good a care of them as we can. So we always want to try and be ahead of the game instead of fighting mother nature or actually reacting to her as it comes. Hopefully you guys learned something on this episode. If you have any questions please 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 like we always say leave a comment in the comment section below ask us those questions we love interacting we love hearing from you hopefully it was educational but it was also enjoyable tune back in next week for another episode of team aquascape